Ready? Are you having shoulder pain? Maybe that radiates down your arm to about mid arm. Maybe you're having problems raising the arm up, getting the elbow past shoulder height. This could be due to a rotator cuff injury. So we're going to show you how to figure that out, what you can do about it at home, and then what we can do for you here. I'm Dr. Dinky at Select Spine and Sports Medicine, a certified chiropractic sports practitioner. This is Jerick Carlton, exercise physiologist. So we're going to go over some of these shoulder issues with you. Now, like I said, uh, a classic pattern of rotator cuff pain is pain here that goes down the side of the arm. Some people think it's their deltoid, it's actually the rotator cuff. So turn this way a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about the rotator cuff. There's four muscles that make up the rotator cuff. They all start back here on the shoulder blade and then they come around like this and attach onto the humerus and make your arm rotate here or if you're here, rotate here or rotate here. That is caused by the contraction of these muscles as they attach here. So if you have a rotator cuff issue in the tendon where it connects to the bone, it'll typically be felt in here and can, again, refer pain down the arm. Now, a few tests that we can do in the office. Um, turn this way for me. I'm going to stand next to you. Classic pattern again. Patient comes in and says, I can't raise my arm about past about right here and I feel pain here. That's because that tendon is getting pinched underneath the AC joint, which is the acromioclavicular joint which is where the clavicle and the back of the shoulder blade come together. You raise here, it pinches on the rotator cuff and creates pain. So another test that we can do is called the empty can test. Bring your hand out like this. Let's say you have a can, you're gonna pour it out on the ground. Push your arm up towards the ceiling. I'm resisting that. And if that causes a lot of pain here, it could indicate a rotator cuff injury. And if the patient can't do it at all, then we're probably looking more at a rotator cuff hair. Um, we also have the full can test. You can push up towards the ceiling again and again same we're looking for the same results there. Turn this way. We have another test called the athlete's back scratch test. You are going to put this hand behind your back. If you can't even do that, you're lacking internal rotation, again clear sign of a rotator cuff problem. But go like this, try to touch your hands together. Okay, so she can touch here on this side. That's great. I can, but she can't. Um, and I don't have a rotator cuff problem, but what we're doing is we're looking to see if maybe this side, she can't do that. So there is a, uh, let's say there's a deficiency in internal rotation on this side. This hand would still come down as far, but now she can't get that one to go any higher, indicating again that she's got some mobility problem in this rotator, or in the shoulder, which could indicate a rotator cuff problem. Um, okay, now turn this way. There's another test that we do, it's called Speed's test. We hold here, bend the elbow just a little bit here, push your hand up towards the ceiling, push, 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 good, relax. So if there's pain with that in the shoulder, this indicates something else, more of a bicep tendonitis, tenosynovitis, something like that. So maybe it wouldn't be rotator cuff syndrome. So it is important that you have this evaluated by somebody who knows about the shoulder and what to do about it. Now, so let's say you have a lot of shoulder pain and we think it's a rotator cuff tear, maybe. You don't necessarily have to have an MRI right away. Some studies show that the rotator cuff can heal itself through exercise, mobility, um, soft tissue work, and even spinal adjustments can help that uh, shoulder blade to move better on the back, freeing up some space underneath the AC joint so that your rotator cuff isn't getting pinched when you move your arm up like that. Now, um, we're going to show you a few easy, simple exercises that you can do at home. Um, first, we're going to do wall calls. Let's do, it, let's do it on this wall here. So, I'll slide this up here. So, wall calls are real simple. Put your hand on the wall and you're going to walk it all the way up. When you get as high as you can, you lean into the wall so you get a little extra stretch right here. Okay, And then walk down. If you can't go that high, what you're going to do is step back just a little. We'll start here. Go as high as you can. Let's say this is all you can get. And then you're going to lean in just a little bit. Again, you're passively giving yourself a stretch. Now stand up and keep your arm right there. 
So if she was leaning into the wall like that, again, do that again, lean all the way down. Now keep your arm right there, but stand up. So now she's here, and she did that passively by leaning forward. So you get that little extra stretch. Now turn sideways. We're going to do the same exercise, but going into abduction. And then same thing, lean into the wall. Now stand straight up, leave the arm there. And she was able to get her arm up all the way to here, but passively. So you're not actively raising it this way, which is harder. Um, okay, now we're going to do cogging. So let's take this little uh, lightweight kettlebell hook. You can do this at home without a weight. You can do it at home by just grabbing a, a can of food and just holding it. But you want a little bit of weight to distract the shoulder. Um, here, we'll use this for some support. So you want to rest your body. Yeah, good. So you rest your body weight on, let's say, the countertop or a chair, and you'll just allow the weight of this um, weight to just kind of distract down on your shoulder just a little bit. You'll do small circles, and this is a pendulum exercise. So you're not actively moving your arm in a circle. You're just letting the weight continue to turn your arm like this, distraction, getting some good mobility in here. We do it clockwise and then counterclockwise. We even go up and down and then also side to side, getting some nice function and movement in that joint. Um, good, okay, now grab that stick. I'll take that. So another good exercise we do um, is passive movement with a stick. So let's say this is the injured arm and she is going to just put her hand over the edge of the stick. She's going to use this arm here and she's going to push using the muscles on this side to get that arm extended up as high as she can going this way. Now we can do that going uh, abduction like this. We can do it going forward like that. Good. And you can do it in multiple different directions. You can even go into extension. You can go into flexion. So, but now let's talk a little bit about a strengthening. So again, these muscles are connected from the shoulder blade back here and they go towards the arm. So if the shoulder blade isn't moving properly, then the arm won't move properly either. So you have to train your shoulder blade to work properly as well as work the rotator, or uh, train the shoulder, or sorry, train the rotator cuff as well. The muscles that connect the shoulder blade to the spine are called the mid trapezius lower trapezius and the rhomboids. So we want to work those. Very simple exercise to do that. Scapular retraction. She'll stand. She'll pull the shoulder blades back in together, squeeze those shoulder blades, and then back forward. Really, really simple here. All you're focusing on is pulling those elbows back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Now, turn this way. We're going to move into external rotation using this resistance band. So this is neutral right here. Arm is here. She's going to rotate into external rotation. The muscles that will be contracting are the external rotators that again attach from here to the back of the shoulder blade. Go ahead. Let's do two of those. Good. Now since you don't need to turn around, let's do internal rotation on this side. Again, we'll be starting here in neutral and then she'll just rotate in towards the stomach. Now you're working the internal rotation of the rotator cuff. It is important to work both, but it's usually the external rotators that are weak and need more, uh, more strengthening exercises. Turn that way now, and we'll take it a step up. You can drop that one. We'll do external rotation here. This is, can be more difficult, especially in the beginning when you have a hard time raising the arm up. So don't jump to this one too quickly. She has the elbow and the shoulder here on the same level, same plane. She's going to keep her elbow right here as if there's a rod going from the elbow all the way through the shoulder and through the body. All she's going to do is rotate the arm up. That contracts all of these muscles back here and then back down to neutral. Again, this is neutral and then back up. A lot of people uh, make a mistake by bringing the shoulder and elbow down like that as they contract the muscle. We just want to leave that right here and let the shoulder do all the work and not contract back here, relax. So those are the exercises you can do at home. Again, some of the things that we can do in the office is first evaluate uh, your issue and make sure that it's a rotator cuff issue. Make sure that we, you're doing the right things at home. 
Number two, spinal manipulation, also shoulder manipulation to help that ball and socket, that glenohumeral mm -hmm. femoral joint move better as well as some soft tissue work to loosen up all the muscles around the shoulder girdle and make sure that everything's moving properly and then guide you through these exercises. So if this is something that you're dealing with, make sure that you get evaluated by somebody who works with shoulders frequently. Make sure you have a proper diagnosis and you're guided down the right path. Thanks for watching. See you next time.